Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Gabriel Carneiro, and I'm here today to talk a little bit about uh, unit test for Python. This is the standard library for Python uh, to, to unit test. Um, but the question is, why do you need to test a software? Um, testing is really important because we need to make sure that the software is behaving the way the way it should. Um, so testing the minimal parts, uh, such as uh, functions, methods, classes, um, help us to um, make sure the software is going to behave the way it should. So whenever we're going to refactor the software in the future, we run a test and then we make sure that it is working properly, right? So the idea here today is to test this class here um, this is the, the class product, um, which we use the data class just to help us with the constructor. And, um, we have four variables here in the constructor, the ID, which is integer name, which is string price, which is a float and stock, which is an integer. And we have four methods here to increase the stock, str the which we will receive the um, integer, which what is the number we're going to add to the stock, decrease stock, which is the um, which will reduce the number of items in a in a product stock. We have uh, a method to check if the number is positive, and to check if this stock is negative, just to validate um, the 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 product we are creating. Uh, so to go ahead and, and run and create a test, we have to create a, a test with any, any name, pretty much, uh, you can create with it, uh, any name. Uh, but here I choose to use the test main, uh, uh, dot pi. So that will help me to find and make sure I'm testing the, 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 the main, uh, file. So the first thing we need to do is to import the unit test package. Um, and with that, we, uh, we, we, are, we have access to everything of the unit test. And you can create, the class we're gonna create now can receive any name. So in this case, I'm using, uh, creating the name test product. And here we have to inherit the unit test test case. Okay. So now we have access to all the test case methods. We need to check the, the, the main file, our product class. So now, um, we are going to use some asserts to make sure the tests are, are going to compare the right, um, items but before we do that what we need to do is in the very bottom of the file we need to put a couple of lines so we can't run a test uh, straightforwardly um, from the from the um, from the common line because if we if we just run uh, the test here It's not going to show anything. Let me just add a, a simple test so we can you can see that not not going to happen if we do not add those couple of lines in the bottom of the file. Uh, by the way, those are the lines. If the name is equal to main. We have to run unit test main. So <clears throat> this help us to just run the Python comment and execute the file just um, to run a, a, all the tests at the same time. All right, so let me add the first test here. And this test, I just wanna make sure that the main file, the, the product uh, class is really da a data class. So it's val validating if it's true or false. So I'll create a, a function here called test if 
it is a data class. All right, so I have to use self here because we're going to use the t test case uh, class from unit test. And then here's the point. Here's the most important part of the test. We are going to use assertions. So in this case, I want to use an assertion that will check if it's true, if the result of it is true. So assert true is the one we are going to use now. And for to make sure that something is is a data class, we have to import a uh, data class um, function. So from data classes, import is data class. This is just going to tell us if uh, if a class a specific class is a data class or not. It's going to return if it's true. If it's a data class or a false, it's not a data class. So I will run, I will put here um, is data class. And then I have to import uh, from main, for our main file, we have to import product, all right? Uh, and then here I will just check if it's true product. That, that's that's very simple if product is a, is a is a data class it's going to return true okay so before we run it i want just to comment this couple of lines in the bottom and try to run the test again and you're going to see that nothing's going to happen but the, the idea of using these two lines in the bottom of every ta unit test uh, file is to make sure it's gonna uh run the, the test itself so let's run again and there it is. We have one test that is okay. All right. So this test here, this assertion is returning. Um, this function is returning true uh, for the for the class product. So our assert true is okay. It's right. It's really returning true. Okay. So it's really really important. Uh, so now let's. Um, run let's uh, define for each test we're going to run we need to define um, important uh, points that we, ne we need to use for every test okay so for the unit test we can use the setup self to every time we're going to run a test it's gonna use this information here okay so I will use self product. Um, and from the self product, I will create an instance where the ID of, of the product is one. The name is test. The price of it is one and the amount in the stock is 10, all right? So for every test we're gonna run, this setup will set the set the product uh, as an instance of the class product, of the class product, which we have created here, okay? So just for an example, let's create a, let's create a new test where, um, we are going to test the constructor. All right. Uh, and now we want to just make um, sure that each part corresponds to the right, not, right part of the constructor. For example, I want to use a new assertion here. Um, I want to say I want to use the assert equal. What does that mean? I will use self product ID and I want to make sure that the ID is one. Okay. So the assert equal will um, make sure that this first part of the um, parameter is equal to the second part. So if I run it, 
I'll run the test, it's gonna return positive. It's it's true that self product ID is one in this part. Let's say let's say that um I want to break this test here. If I run a test again, and it's going to return with a fail. So the test constructor uh, shows that the assertion is one is not true, is not two, uh, which is true. Uh, so the test failed. Okay. And, and we need to obviously do the test in a correct way. So let me let let us let us test everything again. Uh, but now I want to test the name, which is test. I want to test the price, which is one, and the stock is ten. Okay. So let me run it again. Uh, and it returned that it is uh, not correct. Okay, I, I forgot to change the ID. Okay, run. let's fix it here. Run it again. Okay, everything is just correct. So why it's important to test something so obvious? Uh, let's go back to the main file and let's, uh, for instance, I just uh, refactor the, the class and then I, I did something wrong here. I removed price. So if I run the test, I'm expecting that everything to to all the tests work just fine, but it's going to break. <clears throat> it's going to break because um, I removed the price from the class. So if I fix it and run the test again, everything's supposed to run correctly. So here's the importance of using a test. It's important to make sure that the software is going to behave the same way that it is expected to 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 run all the time. Okay. Uh, and let's uh, keep doing our our tests here. Um, let's create another another test. Um, now we're going to work with the increase of the stock. Okay. Let's test that. We're going to increase the stock. Okay, so all I need to do is to use again. Remember, we use the setup, and the self product is available for all the tests after that. So, self product, and I want to increase the stock. Okay, and I want to increase the stock by 10. So once I do that, I can't check if the the method uh, works correctly. So I need to use the assert equal and then check if the self product stock is going to be if we started with 10 and we are adding another 10 to the stock. So it's supposed to be 20, right? Let's run a test again, and it just worked fine. Uh, the increase worked the way it was supposed to, to work. Uh, now we're going to test the increase stock method. It's same thing, pretty much same thing. So self product um, increase stock. Now I want to decrease to the number of n. So I'm removing, pretty much removing the ten from the stock, which was previously um, ten, right? So remember, I am using again. The setup happened again for is going to uh, happen again for this function here. And it's going to uh, be 10, not 20, as we did before. So it's going to re erase from the memory the 20 that we just created before. So what we're testing here is the current 10 
items in this talk. So for that matter, this talk's not supposed to be 10 again. It was supposed to be zero. Okay. Let's run the test again. And then, okay, we have a correct test. Um, and that's it, guys. Uh, as you could see here, we have, um, we didn't cover everything to avoid a video to be too long. Uh, but we have tested here the most important parts of the class. And uh, we use the self true, which we're not gonna, is going to check if the, the uh, value inside is going to be true. So that assert is correct. The, the, uh, the class really is a data class. Um, we create a setup, which is going to run every time a new method, new test is, is running. Uh, we, we tested the, the constructor, make sure it is uh, creating the instance correctly. Uh, we tested the increase talk, which we, ha we used again the assert equal. And we tested the decrease talk. Uh, remembering that we're every time we start a new class, a new test, uh, it's gonna run the setup again. So um, the test return here positive for all the four tests that we took, uh, and uh, that's it. So I hope you appreciate that, and um, and I see you in another video.